Um, so yeah, as Chris said, my name is Katya and I am a conductor at Great Western Railway. I'm going to be talking to you today about my experiences of inclusion at GWR, some of the issues we regularly struggle with and how we might be able to address them. Um, on my slides, I've also included some photos I've taken whilst around the network. So if you do a lot of train travel around Exeter, you might spot some, some um, familiar sights. Um, so a bit about my railway journey. I joined Great Western Railway as a customer host in 2019 and I'm involved in inclusion initiatives, as Chris was saying, um, both in the company and as well in the um, RMT. And I currently sit as a co-chair of Aspect, which is our internal LGBT network, as well as an RMT equality rep, um, and also on the National LGBT Advisory Committee for the Union. In 2021, I started as a conductor, and you can now find me all over Devon, and even a bit of Somerset, um, opening and closing doors, checking tickets, and just making sure that the train gets everyone safely where they need to go. Uh, so a bit about my approach to inclusion. Um, inclusion is in everything we do. Every task is done by someone and every person has had a variety of experiences that have shaped who they are and how they got to where they are now. Anytime we interact with other people, we should be asking if what we're doing is as inviting and as accessible for everyone as it can possibly be. At its core, inclusion comes down to people helping people. Um, it's about making sure that every person is equipped to understand and support whomever they're interacting with. And in order for us to make advances in inclusion, people need to know how to support marginalized people and also recognize the role they play in addressing structural oppression. Another important thing for me is that you don't need to have an inclusion job title to play a role in improving things. Um, I used to think that the only way that I could ever make a difference was if I became like the inclusion and diversity manager of a business or an institution but that actually couldn't be further from the truth. I find that if you recognize a barrier for people in your workplace, you can change it. And no matter what you do, it's on all of us to take steps to bring everyone in. And that's why I feel that some of the most important work I do is actually on board the trains. Um, obviously what I do internally at GWR is really important, um, but it's not always as directly impactful as what I can do when working with people on board. This means things like, I'm not just putting down a ramp because that's what I was told to do in a handover but I'm actually making sure I'm talking to the person who needs it to get a full picture of their needs. Um, doing things like I can take extra time to ensure my vulnerable passengers are safe, even if it means I might delay the train a little bit. And basically I'm in charge of my train and I make sure that no one is facing discrimination from anyone. And the company gives me the tools and support to ensure that I can do this. Everyone should be able to travel without fear or discrimination. And I always try to enter my workplace with the goal of reducing those barriers wherever I can. I'm definitely not perfect at it, um, but always having inclusion at the front of my mind is a good place to start. So how do we get all of our staff to be in that same mindset? These are some of the barriers that regularly come up when we're working um, to make these changes. So most of my colleagues, and indeed most people, really don't want to ever offend anyone, but also don't necessarily have the knowledge around inclusion and diversity especially as it's only relatively recently that it's become a big priority for businesses. Um, everyone still has a lot to learn and understand. Um, within the railway, there's also a historical precedent that we need to overcome. Um, so many people have been on the railway for a really long time. Um, we have a saying that if you're here for six months, you're here for life, which is honestly really true. Um, in some ways, I'm actually lucky that I'll probably be an emerging professional for about another seven years or so. Um, however, that means that lots of my colleagues have been here for a while and can be a bit stuck in their ways um, or resistant to change. They also remember when things in the business were a lot worse and therefore see the current state of things as being great and diversity being an issue of the past. Um, so people struggle to see the need for the change and some just don't really want it to happen in the first place. Luckily, they're more in the minority though. Another issue we face is reaching colleagues from all across the business. Um, our internal network groups are often doing a lot of important and inter interesting work, but we struggle to get engagement with it. Uh, we find it's really hard reaching frontline colleagues, especially, especially as we have people working in like engineering and depots, on trains, at stations, and then also just normal office jobs. Um, and we don't all have the same resources to communicate, communicate internally across the business. So for example, as a guard, I have a phone and a tablet with access to email and all our other online areas. 
but someone who works in engineering often doesn't even have an email address and at most might have a shared computer near where they're working during the day. And then of course, on the flip side of all that, um, people working at a more corporate level are well attuned to internal communication and are really good at things like checking Yammer and navigating online portals and all of that. On the front line, we don't really have the resources all the time and we often don't have the motivation to use these outlets. So it can be harder to connect with us, especially in COVID times where so much of the contact has to be done virtually. Along similar lines, we also have to reach out to colleagues across a wide geographic area. So we go from Penzance up to Brighton and London, up to Worcester and even beyond Swansea. And it can be really hard to reach everyone. A lot of colleagues, especially like down in Cornwall, feel quite isolated from the rest of the business. And we are lucky that we are connected by the railway, but it is still a really long way to go to see everyone. And with the aforementioned difficulty of varying resources, it can also be hard to connect virtually in place of that. So how can we fix it? The biggest thing people need is the relevant knowledge to support marginalized people, both internally and also our passengers, and to understand what their role is in improving inclusion. At a recent meeting to determine our inclusion and diversity strategy for the next two years, one of the biggest bits of feedback we had was that more training is needed. We do have regular training, um, especially for frontline colleagues, but recent feedback on the inclusion and diversity content hasn't actually been very good. Um, so we're currently exploring how we can deliver this agenda in a way that colleagues will be more receptive to. Um, as I mentioned earlier, our online and virtual communication is very fragmented which makes our inclusion work more difficult than it needs to be. Streamlining this is a project that's already underway and one very effective change has been implementing single sign-on for most of these platforms. Um, that means that now people are able to access information about work where they previously wouldn't have bothered to hunt down the login details. And the last thing that I've been trying to do um, is to change our messaging to one of calling colleagues to action and holding one another accountable. Like I said, inclusion is about people helping people and we're more likely to listen to each other um, than to listen from someone from the top telling us what to do. Uh, so what I'm trying to do is pursue more of a bottom up approach where we support one another to do better. The railway literally calls itself a family and especially because of our strong union ties, we naturally have this culture of unity and I want to use these bonds and instill them with more inclusive values. So some of the things we're actually doing, um, some of these projects that I'm quite excited about. Uh, so we recently published our trans guidance um, for line managers on how to support colleagues who have come out or are in the process of coming out as transgender. Um, this included information on ensuring they receive necessary leave from medical appointments, how to help support them in terms of informing colleagues and also emphasized our uniform policy which for a long time now um, has been that anyone can wear a uniform from either gender, gender category regardless of what gender they are. Um, something else I'm really excited about that I'm currently working on is a piece around um, Transgender Day of Visibility on March 31st. What I've done is collated feedback from trans colleagues and passengers and have created a sort of 101 document with information on what it is to be transgender and how to treat trans people respectfully basically. And then on top of that, what I think has been, what I hope will be really impactful is myself and two other colleagues have written some short interviews about our experience of being trans both in and out of the company. Um, and some of those are like really powerful coming out stories and they're really personal and they also give really good advice for how everyone can be a better ally to trans people in general. Um, and this is going to be shared internally in a variety of ways, you know, as a newsletter, in regular weekly emails, and it's also going to be discussed on a manager's call of over 200 people. And I'm hoping that it'll give our staff the support they need to be more inclusive of trans colleagues and passengers. Another project I think that's really good, which is not actually GWR specific, is Passenger Assist. Um, this is a national scheme that works to support disabled passengers traveling across the country, both in journey planning before travel and also ensuring their needs are met whilst making their journey. And GWR actually provides more passenger assist than any other train operating company. And we're actually uh, getting quite close to um, the number of assists that we had before the pandemic as well. 
um, the, sum, the system is uh, soon to be improved as previously passengers would have to book the day before. Now they can book up to six hours before and in April that should be reduced to two hours. Um, it's not always a perfect system. I'm very willing to admit that, but having that infrastructure there has definitely been a big benefit. Um, and also that said, any passenger can still arrive and travel on the day, regardless of if they're disabled and their needs will be met to the best of our abilities. Um, but passenger assist allows this to be done in a more optimal way. And another scheme that's been around for a while now, and I believe was started at GWR, but a lot of train operating companies do, is the rail to refuge scheme. Um, and that allows anyone fleeing domestic abuse to travel to refuge accommodation for free if they um, book through domestic abuse services that are a member of Women's Aid, Welsh Women's Aid, Scottish Women's Aid, or IMCAN, including um, the Respect Men's Advice Line. The tickets they receive are the same as any other ticket, so survivors don't have to risk having any uncomfortable conversations or explanations. Um, and in general, I think using the railway as a direct method of inclusion is really great and a good way to make genuine, meaningful change for marginalized groups. And we hope to and do have a few plans in the works um, for how we can support other marginalized communities using the railway itself. So thank you very much for taking the time to listen me, to me today. I appreciate it was a bit of a quick one, but I'm very happy to go into further detail in the Q&A later. And you can also pop me an email if you want any more information. Thank you so much.